Welcome back. We're at Ohio County Extension Office, and I'm Angie Hudnell, registered nurse. And I'm Tiffany Calvert, the FCS agent here at the Extension Office. We are on lesson two, how to get active. And of course, getting active can help you prevent or delay type 2 diabetes. And the way that works is, is when we're active, that releases that key. So the insulin opens up that cell and uses that glucose as energy instead of storing it and turning that into fat, which is very important. Which meaning, speaking of that, last week, don't forget, you're supposed to make those goals of those weight loss. You want to lose 5, 6, or 7%. And that's really easy to look at when those charts if it's 200 pounds, 5% is just 10 pounds, 6% is 12 pounds, and 7% is 14 pounds. Okay. All right, so in your lesson materials, we um, you should have a story in there about TO. So we're just going to take a moment to read through that because um, we can learn a lot from this story. TO is at risk for type 2 diabetes. His doctor urges him to lose 20 pounds and work up to at least 150 minutes of activity each week. So that's what our goal is for um, all of our participants is 150 minutes of activity. TO and his wife have five children. The kids play sports and he spends a lot of his time driving to events. TO also works full time on weekends. He works a second part time job. When he has some free time, he likes to watch basketball on TV, but rarely plays it. He spends a lot of time sitting. Now, regardless if you have five children or not, a lot of us can relate to this scenario. Tio finds some ways to get more active. So um, the first one was he walks on the sidelines during his children's sports. And weren't you telling me that you do that the yes. same thing? Yes, my daughter plays softball. She plays travel softball. And so um, even though like in between innings, my son and I will um, take just a walk around the park or maybe like when the batting <laughs> line has come up um, because we're in a lot of ball games and I know <laughs> she's not going to be into like the seventh batter. We'll just take a rep around the park. So... Um, we have that moment of activity. Okay, good. Um, he also walks with a friend during his lunch break every day. Um, it's always good to have that accountability partner, you know? Yeah. If you're doing it by yourself, you're less likely to be motivated. He plays basketball with his kids instead of watching it on TV. He takes the stairs instead of the elevator. That's an easy one for me. I'm scared to death of elevators. <laughs> Tio gets more active over time. These days, he gets active for at least 150 minutes each week. His weight is going down. His blood sugar level is lower. He sleeps better than ever, and plus, he has more energy than he ever did before, which is an advantage of being physically active. Um, you know, you would think in your mind at first, being more physically active, you're going to be worn out at the end of the day, and you're going to be more exhausted, but really for those of us that have um, seen and felt the benefits, it's actually the right opposite. You have more energy to do the things that you enjoy doing. And so we're just gonna spend a few minutes talking about ways to um, get more active, um, replace Sunday drives with Sunday walks. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's good to free your mind up, whether you're walking by yourself or in my case, I'm walking with a husband and two young kids. My kids love being outdoors. Um, and so when we're walking, they're collecting the rocks and usually by the end of the walk, <laughs> Our pockets are loaded so uh, of rocks and pine cones and, you know, each and every one of them that they pick up is special. Yes. So we got to keep it. Yes. Yes. Um, walk around whenever you talk on the phone, um, if you spend a lot of time on the phone. Try to walk more briskly as you shop. If you've got, whether grocery shopping or just any kind of shopping, walk faster. Walk your dog each day. When you watch TV, stand up and move during the ads or um, do chores during the commercial break. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you, so in my basement, you'll be proud of me, Angie, I moved our elliptical behind the couch facing the television. Awesome idea. So I'm not missing a moment of the movie that I'm watching with my kids. I'm not missing a moment of my favorite cooking show. Uh, and I'm um, exercising at the same time. Great idea. Yes, because with two young kids, I can't have a moment of downtime. So I've got a <laughs> double dip. Got to um, be present. Yes. And so just other ways to be uh, more physically active. Um, here's a, a good handout from the USDA. 
um, how to be an active family. So like even spring break, fall break, summer break, when you're planning your either your big family vacation or just small trips with your kids, plan an active one. Go, um, you know, to a park. Go, my, my family, we like to go kayaking. Oh, Have yeah. you ever tried that, Angie? Yes. I went whitewater yes. rafting. Oh, whitewater really fun. rafting. Yes. Yeah, so, and that's Flow active. pedaling. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that's very active. <laughs> yes. Um, they made fun of me the last time I went uh, kayaking with a group. Um, my son at the time was six years old. Of course, he was in the boat with me and was sitting in front, and he did all the pedaling. <laughs> It was like I had my own little motor, <laughs> there you uh, go. but I just kept feeding him snacks, and he just kept pedaling, and yeah. he got a real good workout, because the yeah. weight of me being in that boat, I'm sure it wasn't easy, but we had a good time. Um, mm-hmm. Include work around the house. If you've got um, gardening to do, weeding at home around the flowers, um, housework, vacuuming, uh, mopping your floors, like yeah. even in, in to include your kids in that. Yes. Um, and I know with me having two young kids, if I include them in housework, I get more of a workout, okay? Because <laughs> yeah. I've got to keep them both entertained. I've got to keep them both busy. Um, but I know with teenagers, it may be different. So it what do you guys do? Well, with teenagers, you know, the girl likes to do one thing and the boy likes to do something else. So it's like we do a 30-minute on, 30-minute off. Because they're complaining, oh, but it's Saturday and it's our day off. Oh, yeah. So it's like, okay, I set the alarm, 30 minutes. I say, hey, Google, play some music. And then they go do what they enjoy doing. And then, hey, Google, 30 minutes is over. And then they get their 30-minute break. And during that time, the laundry is washing. And, you know, by the next 30 minutes, we got another load to, <laughs> to load. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. So yeah. what does your daughter like doing? The laundry? No, she actually likes doing the dishes in the kitchen. And my son likes doing the laundry in the bathroom. Well, I wouldn't say he likes the bathroom, but he gets that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, if you ever, if they ever run out of things to do at your house, they can come out where they're Okay, okay. <laughs> them out. Yeah. Um, so uh, I always enjoy looking at, it's called the activity pyramid. And if you're familiar with the old food guide pyramid, yes. it's kind of similar to that. So let's take a good look at the activity pyramid. And what I really like about looking at this is it gives you ideas on ways to be physically active, maybe that you're not doing. So just like the old food guide pyramid, at the top of the pyramid, you have activities that you need to do less of. That would be watching TV, playing video games. This is your screen time. Mm. So then next, we have the flexibility activities and the muscle fitness. And I can really use more flexibility activities. So this is one of my goals that I've set um, for this is to try yoga. Have you ever tried yoga? I have, and I really like it because it's not stressful. It's that relaxing, too. Yes. And so some muscle fitness would be your push-ups, your weightlifting, that type of activity. There's active sports, which we need to be doing uh, more of, whatever sport you enjoy. And even if you, you know, we think of our kids being in sports, but what about us getting out there and either playing the sport with them or creating an adult team, right. whether it's right. soccer or volleyball? Um, your body in motion stays in motion. So if we were actively playing sports in high school, a lot of us after high school struggle to keep up the muscles. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, some aerobic activities would be your skiing. That I would break my neck, but that's an activity. Biking, running, and swimming. And I know our Family Wellness Center has um, aerobic exercises that you can do in the water, in the pool. Yeah. Um, and, and that's you know, really nice. If you're not a member of the Wellness Center, it's only $5. To go in. Yeah, to go in. And, you know, you can take family night. And, hey, everybody was going swimming. I mean, you can go year-round. Mm-hmm. It's really good. And I know my mom that has trouble with knees or, or whatnot in the water, it's totally different. You're, yes. you're still building muscles and you're still getting your heart rate up, but it's not as hard on your joints. Absolutely. 
Um, and then towards at the very bottom, what we need to be getting most of, of course, is the walking, um, bowling counts. You're still getting up and moving around, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, um, parking further away, um, whether, you know, whatever store you're going into, park in the back. Yeah. You know, you're less likely you get a door ding anyway. So right. park in the back, get your walking in for the day. Killing two birds with one stone is kind of my philosophy. If it's something that I can easily do on an everyday basis, then um, I want to incorporate it. Um, also, just know that you can come to either Angie or myself at any time and get further resources. Maybe you want more ideas on how to build muscles or just workout ideas to do within your own home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't have to be um, anything fancy. So we do have other resources that we can share with you. So you can just come to, the, to us for those resources. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about, are you ready to get active? Because some people are not ready to just jump in there and be active. Um, yes. A couple of things that you need to maybe check with your healthcare provider. If you're over 50 and you've not been active in a very long time, um, and you're wanting to plan to be active, you probably need to check with your health care provider, make sure everything is okay, and just get approval on that. Maybe you're pregnant and you need to make sure that your health care provider has given you the okay to be active because obviously we don't want to be having babies before they're exactly. ready. Exactly. Um, if you get very out of breath when you're just slightly active, maybe just getting up and walking across the room is very difficult for you. That's something you definitely want to check with your health care provider for. Um, if you have, of course, a heart problem, you definitely want to check with your mm -hmm. heart doctor on that. If you have bone or joint problems that make it hard for you to do things like fast walking, obviously we want to check on that. Chest pain, definitely, again. If you are easily, if you tend to pass out or fall down or get dizzy, um, definitely want to check for that. And during or right after workout, I often have pain or pressure in my neck left shoulder or arm. Those are all signs of cardiac arrest, so we definitely want to um, mm -hmm. check again. And then um, if you take medicine for high blood pressure or a heart problem. So those are things that, um, it, something else, maybe something's going on with you, with your health, and you and your provider's been working on, you definitely want to mention, you know, I want to be more active and what kind of ideas and things that you're okay with me doing. Sure, yeah. And when I think about that, you know, you just have to be, cautious and not um, go into it fast so if your health care provider is okay with you being physically more physically active but you're running across some of these um, challenges it may be that you just need to go slower mm -hmm. um, or do some sort of modified version did you know they offer chair yoga oh really so yeah. they do something to look into so yeah, don't absolutely. just have it in your head that i can't do something just because you're running into a challenge yeah. um, and angie and i either one can work with you and help you to overcome those challenges so those are all really great ideas um so i'm just going to be honest real quick mm -hmm. uh how many like were you excited to join your first 5K? What did you think about it? Do you remember your first 5K? Um, that's when after I first took this position as health improvement specialist, and I thought I really need to be more active myself. You know, I, it's that reflection in the mirror. Yes. Yeah, I need to do something. And my kids are pretty active, so I thought this would be something they'll do with me. Mm -hmm. And the first couple 5Ks, I also signed up my husband. About the fourth one, he asked me not to sign him up anymore. <laughs> And I was really nervous because yeah. I thought, I can't, you know, I, I ran track in school, in high school, but it's been a long time since yeah. I ran. Oh, I long was time. super nervous because I just long assumed time. that a 5K were people that, that I had to run the full length of the time. So when they finally uh, started advertising the 5Ks as a 5K slash walk. Yes. That's yes. when I got involved because then yes. I, I didn't feel so embarrassed about not being able to run that full length of the time. Yes. So, and you get a free shirt if you... Yeah. Yeah. That and, could be fun. Have you ever done the color run? I have not, but I've heard about it. Oh, there's they're so much fun. They're so much fun. And of course, you you're promoting good things for the community. Um, mm -hmm. You know, putting money back into the community. Yeah, because a lot of them are just benefits to right. raise money right. for different right. programs, sports events, yes. uh, um, shelters... Yeah, you're right. 
We definitely right. Okay. So if do you have further ideas on how we can be safer? Wow. Well, of course, um, you want to make sure you're dressing for that activity. Um, you want to make sure you're wearing the right shoes. Are they a good solid shoe, mm -hmm. good tennis shoe? And there's a difference between like a regular tennis shoe and a running shoe, right? That's right. There is. There the is running ones are like lighter, lightweight and more flexible, I guess. Yes, yes. Um, and then, of course, the right clothes. You want to wear what you're, you know, if it's going to be hot outside or, of course, cold. You want to, And clothes that are not restricting so you can be moving. Uh, make sure you're drinking water before, during, and after your workout. It's really important, even if you don't even feel thirsty. And that keeps your body good, um, replenished, and keep those blood vessels filled up really good, mm -hmm. and so you're not getting dehydrated. So I've always heard, like, when you feel thirsty, that's really your first sign of dehydration. That's right. It's already too late. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you want to stay ahead of the game. Exactly. Yeah. So, of course, listen to your body. Um, I know... When I was growing up, I always heard, no pain, no gain. Yeah. That is wrong. That is so wrong. <laughs> Slow down or stop if you start to feel tired, sick, faint, or, of course, your body or joints are hurting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mix it up. Do a variety of activities. That way you won't strain any one part of your body because, you know, today you're walking, you're moving your legs, and then tomorrow you're, I don't know, doing push-ups. Mm -hmm. Or you can do the plank. You know, they did the planks, yeah. and that does your core, so you're getting a little bit of different things. And my daughter does this challenge with my son um, who can do planking the longest. And you'd be surprised how long you can plank and how long you cannot plank. <laughs> Wall sits. Those kill oh, me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really core. Yeah. core. And then start small. If you train too hard or too often, you may get hurt. Obviously, try to make slow, steady progress, as mm -hmm. Tiffany said. Um, warm up before you work out and cool down after you work out. You know, those stretching exercises and things that we do. And a lot of times you'll see on TV or something where people like run this big long run and then they go lay down. That's the worst thing you can do. Mm -hmm. If you're running and you're really hot and you just want to lay down, just keep walking. Put your arms up over your head and that kind of expands the lungs and gets all the oxygen in there. And it's a better way to cool back down. And then, of course, watch out where you're going to be. Take care not to trip, bump into anything. Working with the weather, work out indoors if it's too hot or too cold. If you get too hot... You may get a headache or a fast heartbeat. You may feel dizzy, sick to your stomach, or faint. Of course, again, make sure you're checking with those providers, drinking that water, uh, wearing the right things, and use good form when you're strength training. That's with the muscle stuff. You know, if you're lifting, you'll know, lift with your knees and not your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are all really good safety tips. Now, we've made mention of a couple of exercises already, like the wall sits or the planks, and you may not exactly even know what those are. So what I wanted to remind everyone is to look for more videos um, relating to this uh, lesson topic. And these videos are going to be from the experts right here in our community. So we're going to hear from different people that have um, uh, expert advice and tips to share with you and even some demonstrations on some simple exercises that you could do at home. So look for those videos. So now I'm going to address different challenges when uh, it comes to phys being more physically active. And I think the number one thing is I don't have time. I don't have time yeah. either. There's it seems like hours. from the time I wake up in the morning until the time I lay my head down, I go, 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 go. Yes. Um, and that's one thing that I want to encourage everyone. If you have a job that you're already being physically active, maybe you do a lot of walking already or a lot of lifting, um, we are going to encourage you to take it above and beyond what you're already doing. So let's say at work, you normally get two to 5,000 steps in a day, okay? So when we're concentrating on 150 or minutes of activity a week, we want you to do above and beyond what you're already doing, mm -hmm. okay? Whether it be at home or at work or wherever. Um, a challenge um, to be physically fit may be it's too hot or it's too cold. And as the weather changes, especially here in Kentucky, we yes. don't know what it's going to be like from day to day yeah, or snowy. from hour to hour. It may snow in the morning and it may, you know, be 60 degrees at night. Mm -hmm. um, and so just to have that backup plan, you know, if you normally walk at the park and all of a sudden it's snowing, you know, do something indoors. Um, 
You don't necessarily um, have to have a gym membership, but that's always nice to fall back it's on. It's very nice. Um, especially in the winter months. So always dress for the weather. Um, addressing the challenge of not having enough time, going back to that idea. Um, get off the bus or train one stop early, walk the rest of the way, park further away from um, the front of the store. Um, use a fitness app. If you would like for either Angie or I to walk you through a couple of different fitness apps, then we mo most certainly can do that. Mm -hmm. It's basically personal preference. Uh, but there's a lot of good apps out there. There are. Um, a, a good friend of mine right now is using the Couch Potato to 5K. Cool. Um, and so it's just encouraging. It's a way you could track it and keep motivated. Um, staying physically fit, fit at home when you don't have enough time is taking advantage of using chore time. Okay. Um, and then, especially when I'm doing chores at home, by myself when there's nobody else around like you could play music and dance while you're doing them great okay i can't dance angie so you know um, but it's, it's fun it is it is and it's a workout but mm -hmm. it would not be a show for anyone to see um <laughs> mowing your lawn with a push mower yes only a portion of it my yard's <laughs> way too big but too. a portion of it um we didn't plant and care for a vegetable or a flower garden yes um, we, we do gardening for mm -hmm. sure. Um, at work, you can join the office softball team. If you don't have one, why don't you encourage the people that you work with to have one? Absolutely. Um, if softball's not your thing, try volleyball, soccer, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and playing sports as an adult um, is different, but it's so much fun. Yes. I mean, it's so much fun. You just laugh and have a good time, and you're not the sporty expert that you were in the high school <laughs> so it's just hilarious mm -hmm. it's hilarious um another challenge may be that you don't have child care and sometimes that can be an issue mm -hmm. so do swap child care opportunities with a friend maybe um, on thursday nights in the week you have a workout routine and your friend's going to cover that for you um, or just exercise with your kids. Um, mm -hmm. Thursday nights, I have been going to an exercise group, and it's a group of moms with young children, and we just let all of our kids play together in one area while we exercise in another. Um, and I'll tell you, this is funny. One time, um, I forgot my weights, and mm -hmm. so my youngest, and you may not be able, you can't do this with your children, but my youngest, my two, three-year-old at the time, I actually used him as a weight. <laughs> That's good. And idea. he really enjoyed That's it. Good idea. He really I enjoyed it. So, yeah. I don't think you could do that with your kids, no. but no. Yeah, it's something you could do. Maybe um, you could use a, like a can of beans or something. Yeah. Things like that. Um, yeah. A gallon of milk if you want to save oh, yeah. that gallon jug and fill it back up with water or beans or whatever. Yeah. I mean, a gallon. That's heavy. Yeah. Um, another challenge would be that you feel embarrassed, kind of like how I was in the beginning with the 5Ks. Like, I, that was just not going to be my thing. I, Zumba. Do you like Zumba? Um, I've not done Zumba, yeah. but I've seen it. Oh, I've tried it. And I told, <laughs> I've already told you I can't dance, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm at the wellness center, and I'm trying out Zumba. And, of course, there's like a gym full of people, right? Mm -hmm. And I told my friend before I went that I was not coordinated. And so, I mean, those ladies were breaking it down. And at one point, we did, like, everybody did a 180 and turned to be facing the other direction, and I was still facing the other <laughs> direction. Like, I just couldn't keep up. But it was, mm -hmm. it was fun. Um, it was not too embarrassing. And they have regular classes, Zoom yes, classes. Yes, they do. Yeah. They do. It's ongoing. Yeah. Another challenge is it costs too much, and then we've already said different weights that you have in your own home. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be a, a technical weight that That's is right. meant for exercising. Um, clothing can be relatively cheap, too. You don't have to have name brand or, I mean, a t-shirt yeah. and a pair of looser fitting bottoms, whatever that mm -hmm. is. Um, just comfortable. Just comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people go out and they... Set goals to be physically active, especially at the beginning of the year, you know, mm -hmm. and they even mm -hmm. go shopping and they get the clothing, they yes. get the equipment, yes. and then it lasts 
till <laughs> maybe February if yeah. you're lucky. Yeah. And so then you've spent all this money yeah. um, and equipment that you may have in your home that is just going to waste. Um, so another challenge would be it's boring. You know, change it into something fun. Play a sport, dance. Um, listen to music. That's um, you know what I usually do if I'm not watching TV. If I'm on the elliptical, I'm either reading something or listening to music because exercising can get bored if if you're doing something repetitive. Yes. So, do you have any other act, any wise thoughts on how we might become more physically active? Just just move. I mean. That's yeah. basically all it is. Yeah. And I tell myself that. I just got to get up and move. I know. I know. That's all it takes. And I've got this thought in my head, and I need to do a better job, that walking is not worth it. I find myself thinking at work, well, I could easily take a five, ten minute break, walk around the building, mm-hmm. and that would be at least some physical fitness, right? Mm-hmm. But right. then I find myself thinking, well, I didn't break a sweat, didn't really work hard at that, so what's the point? <laughs> and then I don't do it, and I know that's wrong, so mm-hmm. I'm going to try to do better. I'm going to mm-hmm. try to do better. So that's all that we have, and I hope that you take advantage of the resources that we give you and um, the further videos that we'll have for you.